that you know God. Amen. Romans, the eighth chapter. So many times we go to church, and a lot of times we go to church at funerals, and we have yet to see anybody from a funeral go to hell. Everybody that died a funeral, some kind of way or another, they make it to heaven. Ain't nothing changed about them. They just had to go to heaven. And God going to get all them lying preachers that have been putting everybody in heaven. Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning at the first verse. And I'll be going to the fifth verse after that, to the eighth verse. And it reads, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The fifth verse. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is imminent against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are after the flesh cannot please God. Oh, Heavenly Father, in Jesus. God, I say right now, have your way in this service. God, I know in my eyes that I can see what the money spirit you desire for me to see. I know in my ears that I can hear directly from you. But most of all, God, I know in my mouth that I will say nothing of myself, God. But all that you give me to say, God, but I ask some of to you. That you'll anoint your people ill. That the way they came in this place, God, they won't lead that way. God, because you said in your word that you be lifted up on the earth, you'll draw all men unto me. God, I come to lift up that name that is above every name. And that name is Jesus. God, send your spirit in this place to rest, to heal, to set free. But most of all, have your way. And God, we forever give you the praise. We'll give you the thanks. In your son Jesus' name we pray. And every heart can say amen, amen, and amen. We thank God for God being God all by himself. And churches are full this morning because everybody like going to church. Now why they go, I still have a question mark. Because we do what we want to do and God expects for us to do something different. And so many times people are not being different in the church. And then when people that's not in the church see people in the church and they say, well, we look just alike. But God is looking for him to transform people's life into being something different. And no matter who don't came to this ministry or left this ministry, they was different. Because the way you come in the church, you shouldn't stay that way. And so many times now we find that the people in the church are still the same. You know, uh, most of them still cuss. They still smoke. They still homong. Well, I just can tell y'all, I probably said some stuff a lot of preachers won't say. But we allow people to stay the same and then when death comes, or sickness comes, they don't know how to deal with it. And so today, uh, I want to talk to y'all about your flesh will never be saved. This part here will never be saved. Because this part draws away from God. And the reason why I draw away from God, I served this flesh for 38 years. Never had a thought about changing for God. I went to some church service. I went to some funerals. I went to a lot of stuff. But I love my flesh, and I didn't find nothing wrong with it. I mean, when I was hoeing around, I didn't find nothing wrong with being a hoe. I mean, I never had been to church. Uh, so a clubbing was my thing. I never did find nothing wrong with it. But one day I went to church, and I heard a preacher preach. And I said, now, if God died for me, 
how can I stay the same and still say I'm with God? Because God said, I want you to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. But now the church can say this chance same, and now we got holy people that say they're holy, but they still wrong. They still doing stuff that shouldn't be. So everybody now is going against the word of God. But God is telling me, no matter what they say or what people say, you can die up here and the preacher can say you're going to heaven. But when you die, the only person know where you're going is you. And one thing about hell is hot, eternal, low, and lonely. When you get there, there's no getting out. So a lot of times we waste time trying to transfer people's life when they get him. It's too late. When you get the roll up him and they bring you up here in the front of the church, it's too late for the preacher to lie and say you're going to heaven. It's too late. Who have you seen go to hell that died? No matter how their life was, you still sit there and say, he went to heaven? I know I do it. I know I do it. I, I do it now. Even with my family members. When they die, I said, <laughs> boy, don't look good. Now, it ain't my decision to make that, but you really made it. But this flesh will always draw away from God. Y'all tell me how many times you came in contact with church or God or some kind of way, and then you said, I got to change my life. A God, this is our favorite line. God, if you get me out of this, if you get me out of this, I promise you I ain't going back there. I ain't doing it no more. But let me just talk about me. I used to spend my money going to the club every week. And I swear that the next week I won't spend my money going to the club. Next week come, I'm right back at the club. Because you know what that flesh do? It said, boy, you know what you want. Y'all can't tell me you ain't never got there. But one thing about us, God is like oxygen. You can't see him, but you need him to survive. You don't see the oxygen that you, that's out here, but if he cut off the oxygen, you will die. God, if God didn't wake you up this morning, all of us would be dead. So when they were talking about a miracle, I said, here's a miracle because I woke up this morning. I don't know about nobody else. I still can move. I still got the activity of my leg. I can see. I can talk. There's people laying them in the hall pillar can't do nothing. And we can't even clap our hands. But if I promise you a car, how you'll be jumping up him. If I promise you a home and a man, you'll be jumping up him. But this flesh will never be saved. It always draws you away from God. You can make up your mind and swear, I'm going to change. That flesh said, yeah, that's just what you're saying now. But when your boo call, hey, that boo call, hey, whether well, it's a booty call, whatever call it is, you know when that call comes. <laughs> God, you just got to wait right now. Hold on for a minute. I'm going to get right back to you. Why? Because that flesh said, no, nah, that's your boo now. You don't get with boo, boo going to get somebody else. But you got God. But I really don't, you know, God will wait on me. Because God is a loving God. You know what I found out about everybody? Everybody tell me, you can't judge me because I know I love God. But you're not in love with him. It's a difference. I loved a lot of women, but I went in love with them. I love them for what they can do for me. You love God for what he can do for you, but you're not in love with him because you don't want to change. Don't nobody want nobody horn on them. But we horn God. Because the devil been good to us. But Paul said in Romans, he was telling the church in Romans 8, he said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that walk in the, which are in Christ, Jesus. And a lot of people use that in comfort to make everybody feel good because they say, there is no condemnation. But the key part that preachers tell you, they just want your money. I want your soul and spirit. I want you to be able to go back to heaven. So if we look at the scripture, the scripture really ain't saying that. 
He said, therefore, there is no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. First of all, it's you in Christ Jesus. It ain't got nothing to do with the church. Ain't nobody going to heaven for being in him. They going to heaven for being the church. That's why this flesh, you got to get rid of this flesh. This flesh going to draw you away. Some people might not even want to hear what I'm talking about this morning. But when you stand before God, you're going to wish one day you had heard what God said. Why not today? Because your flesh will never be saved. We got people in the pulpit, sisters and dykes and all that in the pulpit. God ain't called no, no preacher to be no sister and then preach his word. He ain't called that. Just like he ain't called you to stay in sin, steal a horn, or shacking and know you shouldn't be shacking, smoking dope. He, this his body. He made that for his creation. We supposed to be worshiping God, not just coming to church. And they got so many organizations now, and none, most people that go to church don't even know the Bible. But they'll tell you they say. They'll tell you they love God. But he said in the scripture, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now my question is, how many of us keeping this commandment? Yeah. Listen to what he said. He said, therefore there is no condemnation for them that are, which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh. Whenever you hear the word flesh, I'm talking about sin. Because the flesh is always contrary to the spirit. Never be. It will never be saved. So he's telling us that but after the spirit, mean walk after the spirit. But we can't walk after the spirit because we can't do what God wants. But it said, you and your flesh will never be saved. In other words, you powerless to be able to do what God wants you to do. And then it said, never, at no time, in the past or the future, no matter where you go, if you don't get saved now, you'll never get saved. And I, I, can, I can preach a good sermon over you, but it ain't going to do no good. In the fifth verse, he said, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Anything the flesh wants you to go after, that's where they go after. It don't have no, no govern on it. It don't have nothing to stop it. You do what you want to do. And so many times, that's where the church is erring at now. Because now we can go to church, we see everything operating in the church. No one want to be holy. People want to tell me, I'm Babylon, I'm Emmy Zion, I'm Methodist, I'm Catholic, I'm this, I'm that. But no one is saying I'm holy. No one is saying my life has changed. No one is saying I'm a, I'm a spiritual being. We still fleshly, and we still do everything we were doing. But now you're supposed to be with God. And had nothing changed. But when I look at these books in here, it says some stuff had to change. Numbers tell us in number 32 and 23, it said, but if you will not do so, if you will not take heed to God's word, he said, behold, he said, look, you have sinned against the Lord. Anytime you don't do what the word said, you have sinned against the Lord. He said, but be sure your sin will find you out. Y'all, you know, ain't nobody, I tell this membership all the time, they ain't got to pay no attention. My, my thing is, is do like God, the mailman do. When God power do a disconnect, all he do is put that in your, in your mailbox. Now what you do with it, whether you go pay God power or not, it ain't the mailman man job to even worry about that. So I'm going to just drop this mail in your mailbox, whether you pay your bill or not. That's up to you. Just don't let your light get cut off. That's the only thing about it. You know, God power, you can go back and repay that. But if you die after here in the day, you can't just go back and pay that. You know, you just can't do that. You can't go to God power and pay God for your sin. God wants God want you. He got you here. So, hey, what can I say? I used to tell people to fasten their seatbelt because we get played with so much in church. That's why people ain't saying they don't hear the truth. I don't care if y'all don't give a dime in the offering. I don't care if y'all don't do nothing. Your soul is more important to God than your money. What good your money going to do? You could be rich and die. What you, what, what are you going to end up at? Right. Right. I ain't seen no welfare go behind no hearse. I ain't seen no car, no house behind there. And if they put your money in the cash, I told y'all, I'm getting it. I'm going to write you a check because you ain't going to be able to spend it. I'm going to write you a check so I'm paying you for it. 
but we can't. Your flesh, your flesh, your flesh is going to draw you away from God every time. Every time your mind going toward God, it's going to draw you away. Why? Because that was the flesh here. Well, maybe I better explain the flesh because y'all might not know the scripture. But this flesh, it said, I looked it up. So y'all ain't got to look it up. Can y'all just go with me for a few minutes? It said the flesh, perhaps the most plainly is referred to that part of us that is alienated from God. Alienated means that you are separated from God. So if you ain't saved, if anybody here ain't saved today, we know one thing. The first part, this came out the dictionary, so you know this ain't no Bible uh, definition. This, this Webster. It said you alienated from God. So everybody that's not saved is alienated from God. So if you die that way, you know one thing, you still separated. He's an alienated. To call someone a, a group of people to stop supporting or to stop feeling welcome from God. So you, you just feel like it don't make sense for me to serve God. And that's why he said right here, for they that are after the flesh, they do mind the things of the flesh. You can't think spiritual. You can't go after spiritual stuff. You can't. You know, I, I, let me just tell y'all and explain something to y'all too. I've been preaching for a while right now, and I came out the street, and I understand that sometimes we are so strong, so bold, we can ignore you, do all that. All I need is your ear. I don't care about your body language. I don't care if you ain't paying me no attention. All I need you to do, you can't, you can't stop these up. <laughs> you can do a lot of things, but you can't stop them up. So let me just borrow your ear for a few minutes. You can ignore, but it's an alienated from God. That means you are separated from God. Who want to be separated from God? Knowing that he wake you up. Now, we can sit here and ignore God, but what if he don't wake you up in the morning? I, I, I don't deal with people. They said this young girl used to sing in church, was good, had a beautiful voice. She was about 18 years old. She went to sleep one night, woke up paralyzed from top to bottom. What would you do if you wake up after hearing this message paralyzed? You ain't want to listen to what the preacher said. You ain't want to do this and that. You ignored it, but you woke up paralyzed. Ain't nothing moving but your eye. You can't go to the bathroom no more. You can't hold no more. You can't drink no more. You can't do nothing. You is paralyzed. Where you used to can, you know, do your little thing. Ain't none of that going on now. Ain't no booty shaking going on. Ain't no making love no more. You is paralyzed. But God said, I ain't going to kill you. I'm going to just let you lay there. So it don't matter to y'all. It don't matter to, to me. It's how you take it. Every man got to be persuaded by his own man. My job is to tell you. Because God can shut everything down on you. It happens all the time with people. It happens all the time with people. People don't know they're going to get in a wreck and die. They would. They wouldn't have got in the car. You don't know what's going to happen to you. And we sit up and we see young people die all the time. But we got our own mind. That ain't going to happen to me. But you the next one in the caster. But once you get in the caster, there is no getting out. He said, that's what he said. Your flesh will never be saved. Never. It said, never. At no time in the past or the future, on no occasion, not ever, not at any time, that you will be saved. I'm going to get saved when God get ready. He was ready 2,000 years ago. That's why he died. He ain't died for just me to get saved. He died for you to get saved. And then, you know it's bad to be an old fool. I'm serious. My daddy used to tell me I ain't understand it then. But, you know, you, you, you're almost six to seven years old, and you're doing the same thing you were doing. You know, it's bad when old men sagging. you 70 years old, 65 years old, and you sagging. Got... He said, perhaps the most painful, plainly, is referred to a part of us that is alienated from God. Then he come back and say, it is rebellious. Oh, so you got rebellious people in your flesh? 
that will keep you from God. You see, first it said that person is alienated from God. The next one said you're a rebel, re rebellion. But we got people in here now. We got people that go to this church too that are rebellious too now. There's a lot of me here going to hell from this church too. Don't, don't, don't think I, I'm preaching to y'all. I'm preaching to them too. There's a lot of them in here going to hell too because they rebel. They come to church when they want to. They pay time when they want to. They talk about the church when they want to. Rather than him going to hell. And now they want to start looking at each other. And when you start looking at each other here, then you're going to burn just like anybody else burn. I ask, what's the difference than the sinner in the screen and the sinner in this church? And we always telling everybody else, you going to hell if you don't get saved. Most of the people in the church going to hell. They ain't, they ain't changing neither. I, I, I like to preach. It's a rebellion. Showing a desire to resist authority. He is God. And now y'all want to resist authority. It said control, rebellion, a person likes to challenge authority or to break rule. Rebellion. I don't care what y'all say. I don't care what that preacher said. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I ain't got to die for you. And I ain't got to live with you. I hate touching my hand on the stove, so I know I ain't trying to go to hell. That sun out there is too hot for me. I'm already dark skinned. What more I want to burn? You know, you can you can order your steak right, but you can't order what you want to be in hell. You can't talk about I want to be meat in your wrath. You can't do that. Everything that up burning 24 hours, so I know it's well done. I like my steak well done. How y'all like y'all steak? You can't order, you can't order meat and wrath down there. I want to see some blood in. No, that burning, baby. Ain't no, ain't no blood going to hell neither. What y'all going to do when you get there? He said, rebellion. He said, breaking rule. Every now and then, a, a rebellious group tried to overthrow leadership. Rebellion. You know y'all get together and be talking about I don't know what he's talking about. I'm gonna do what I want to do. Child, I ain't, I ain't, I, ain't, I, I got some grown children, but if they get wrong, I, I ain't whooping them no more. I'm putting these five blind boys on. Cause when you, when you come against me and I don't birth you, it ain't no time to put no belt on no grown man. How you gonna whoop them? So when y'all rebel against God, He gonna whoop y'all. Y'all know it, 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 it's bad that the, I know the visitors, uh, guests just got here. I can understand them might be looking at y'all. But some of y'all like this, y'all first time in church too, I'm talking to the member. Uh, they might not understand me, but y'all understand me. Y'all looking just as, just as, y'all all right? Lord have mercy. Your flesh will never be saved. Y'all can bust up in here every service and act like y'all say, act like y'all love God. You know, some of y'all shaking some stuff too. Jesus. Don't act like, don't try to act like I'm just preaching to the people that here that ain't been here before. I'm talking about y'all because the mess was for y'all. God, God might have knew they would come. I ain't know they would come. God was talking to y'all that flesh ain't gonna never be saved. All y'all still doing a little like some creeping at night. Y'all know it. Y'all battle ain't dead. And they want to come here and act like y'all singing to God. I watch y'all. And I know what y'all was saying. They're for the members that, them, them uh, the people that just came here. No, God told me, preach this mess to y'all. And y'all trying to throw the weight somewhere. That's why y'all looking crazy. Because y'all have heard the message three times. And God said, y'all ain't doing nothing with it. See, that's the problem. See, I understand. I understand, Cornerstone. See, y'all some young slicker. Y'all trying to pass them mess on. Get them, Pastor. Preach to them, Pastor. Tell them about the club, Pastor. Y'all might not go to the club, but you got clubs in your house. Yeah, y'all try to be slick. Y'all thought y'all thought the mess was gonna be for the visitors. No, nah, them mess for y'all. No, nah, y'all ain't putting them mess nowhere else. See what I'm talking about? That's why God said Con conjunction, conjunction. What's your function? See, God know y'all function. Y'all don't swallow something now. See, y'all were fine as long as y'all preaching, and y'all thought the message was for them. 
See, I told y'all, y'all slit. That flesh will fool y'all every time. See how the flesh fool y'all? Conjunction. It's a word that connects. See, I don't connect it to y'all now. It's a sentence. It's a phrase. It's a clue. It's a word. Y'all in y'all flesh. And let me just give this to y'all because y'all don't even listen to the scripture. People on the earth hate to hear the word repentance. Those in hell wish they could hear it one more time. See, 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 y'all, y'all church people hate repenting. Why y'all looking like that? What kind of sin y'all on did that I had to do with over the weekend? Y'all, I'm talking about the church, y'all. Oh my God, y'all look like y'all, y'all in sin. I, I see what God did. He brought some guests in him to make y'all be showed up. Now who the member? <laughs> y'all should have kept y'all hand down. <laughs> that wasn't no that wasn't no good one right there. I said who are the members? Cause is everybody blending in? I don't know who the members is. Cause if anybody should look funny, somebody talking about a whole mung and shacking and all that, you might have the guests looking like that. Cause they ain't probably heard preachers say that kind of stuff. But here y'all live. Oh, he ain't looking good, y'all. He ain't looking good. Look what this said. Being angry at the Bible truth doesn't make you right. It only makes you an angry sinner. I'm talking to y'all in here. And y'all keep feeding y'all flesh because y'all been hearing words. Some of y'all been here 10 years, 8 years, 7 years, and you're still whoring. You're still smoking. You're still drinking. You're still lying. I'm talking about the member now. So even though God is allowing the guests to hit it, he really talking to y'all. That's supposed to be saved. That's supposed to be walking right. That's supposed to be loving right. And y'all got more issues just like you came in. I thought it would be going to transform you. But some kind of way, you won't turn from a car to a truck. You won't let me change you. That's what's wrong with us. And you know the Bible telling in the vision 119, 8 and 9. It's a forever Lord. That word is selling to heaven. It ain't going to change for y'all if y'all not born again. Coming in the church again but not born again. Most of y'all that haven't changed. I keep telling y'all that's why God can't send nobody. Y'all still in sin. It said it's not time to give the people what they want. But you just keep feeding your flesh. It's going to kill you. Coming here and God hearing you saying you should have unlawful sex. And then you got church people going to have an unlawful sex. Ain't married. Corner stone. Letting people feel on you when you say your body belong to God. Dog, corner stone, y'all ain't jumping. And, and more people raise up their hand than that. Then ain't, where the members there? Y'all don't got, where y'all don't got uh, amnesia or something? You can't go to horn and thank you with God, y'all. I'm talking to the church. The church was messing everybody up because we the one for to be saved. We the one for to be a light. And we just as dark as everybody. Look at y'all. Y'all can't even say amen. Your flesh still will never be saved. It'll never be saved. You can pimp it all you want, put nice clothes on, dress it up. It'll never be saved. It said it's unruly. We talking about that flesh. It's unruly. You know, I, I have Christians all the time say, you know, uh, they cuss. And then they say, I don't know where that come from. I know where it come from. It came from me and you. What you talking about? You don't know where it come from. You ain't got no mic on your back, no, no tape recorder. It came from you. You've been cussing all the time. You just don't cuss at church. And it testifies. Any of y'all still cuss that go to Cornerstone? See, y'all don't mind lying. Y'all ain't wave your hand. Tell me that slip. What a believer doing slipping cussing. Well, I bet you hit your hand with a hammer, you a hammer, you a cuff. Well, I don't did it before I ain't cuff. Cussing ain't in me. Amen. How many member we got? Did, 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 did y'all leave? Well, let me talk to the guests because the church is a sinners. They sinners in here. I might well talk to the member. I might can get one of them saved if I tell the truth about y'all. They said one thing the preacher ain't just talking about us, he talking about the church too. They nasty up in him. 
God was trying to tell y'all something. And y'all keep trying to ignore what God tell you, but he been telling you something. But you keep on freeing that flesh. He come back and Malachi and said, for I am the Lord and I change it not. The same thing God did back in the Old Testament, all the way to the New Testament, he will still do it to y'all. And then y'all know better. How could a believer still smoke? Because you know what that flesh said? Get you a cigarette. You know when you go in the bathroom, it make you use the bathroom good. That was my sister used to tell me. Talking about they go in the bathroom. You got to get a cigarette because it make, it, it make you use the bathroom good. No, that's a big lie. You just want to smoke. Messing up your, your mouth, your lungs. I preach my brother through me. He died. What they give him smoking? I preach his, his funeral. And told the people, he died from smoking. And most of y'all, when y'all get out there feeling, gonna go right outside and smoke. You know what they did? They went right outside and smoke. Here's proof of Y'all seen Terry? I don't know how to use Terry on the commercial. Y'all seen the commercial with that lady Terry smoking? Huh? I don't even smoke. I hate to see her. She dead now. But if anybody seen the commercial, seen like you ought to say, uh uh. Uh uh no not mm 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 mm. Now yeah, they might not show, but I don't know. They don't show you somebody's sex too, cause AIDS mess up too. I remember when I was out there horning around, shoot, I was trying to pray to the Lord. Please don't let me get AIDS. But y'all know what? That flesh ain't never stopped me from doing. It. And every chance I got, I still did it. You know, I had some rubbers in my wallet, but I ain't get them out. Cause she might change her mind. Seen people smoking reefer. Somebody give them a lace joint with crack in it. Now you crackhead. You was a reefer here. Now you're a crackhead. You ain't planning to be a crackhead, but you end up just getting you know, somebody end up getting you the wrong dope. And now your life messed up. But with Jesus. You can stay high 24 hours a day and they can't arrest you for it. You can get drunk and don't even have a hangover. You see what I'm saying? I ain't got to worry about everybody going to hell because I ain't going. I'm making preparation. I am not trying to go there. This is how God said. And then we got people that hearing the word. Every Wednesday, every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they still will go do what they do. Boy, y'all know the flesh got to be strong. Y'all know the flesh got to be strong. Then what it said? They said the flesh is ugly. Y'all hear that? That flesh is something else, man. Says ugly, unpleasant. Y'all know how people do that's in the church? They'll go off on you in a minute. Y'all ain't never had no save old lady go off on you? I don't, I don't see some of them. They be holy and have their little thing on their head and and all of a sudden, you men around and almost skipped them in the line. Huh? I, maybe it just happened to me. And they'll tear church up, shouting and speaking in tongues. Hyundai, Kanda, Matsake. You know, they ain't, no, they ain't no tongue, but they do that, you know. But we, we play. And then when you see them, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't really saved. I see a lot of, lot of saved people riding in car and, and, and church. When you're close to the church, you place your sh Shekinah glory. <laughs> but when you go up by Alice Coat, <laughs> Alice Coat don't want to hear no Shekinah glory. You turn that thing on and bang it. Y'all know y'all know y'all listen to. Tell me what y'all listen to when y'all go up by Alice Coat. But God trying to tell us this flesh would never be saved. You cannot sin successfully. That's what God is trying to let us know. We cannot sin successful. And the flesh would never come to subject or be subject to the spirit of God. Never. It said unruly. Then it said the inner self, a part of the inner self, that was the unruly. It said, it is that part of us 
that do not want to be told what to do. Can I just tell y'all for a few minutes? I ain't called now scripture and people looking all down. I ain't called now scripture. I don't know what they're looking for, Pastor. I ain't called, I ain't even called no scripture. So I know they came and looking at the Bible. And I guess they don't want to look at me. I don't know what it is, but but what I'm saying, I ain't called now scripture, so you try to ignore me. But anyway, it's bad to keep coming in the church and really not trying to change. I, I, don't, I don't forget about the guest now called. It's bad for us to have about 70 some members, young people, and then you going to still try to do what you want to do. But you don't want nobody to tell you wrong. But y'all will tell y'all children to tell up for doing wrong. But then you don't want nobody to tell you wrong. But then as soon as you get sick, you want to call my number. Soon as sin don't, don't, don't bust out the scene, you want to call us to be praying. We need a prayer line. You want to get to prayer. Ain't been to prayer. Ain't coming to prayer. But you at prayer now. He said, then it said, it is stubborn. That flesh. I ain't know the flesh had all this to it. Because I, I would have been, I would have been, I would have been got saved. It said stubborn, headstrong, strong will. But that bad. Pig-headed. A stubborn person always think he's right. That's the flair. Always think they right. A stubborn person, the man to do what he want or she want and refuse to do anything else. That's, that's, that's that flair. It, it got a way of controlling you and, and you ain't got no control over yourself. Pleasant. Unpleasant. John 3 19 said, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and man loves darkness rather than light, because that deeds are evil. And that's where we at. We, we we love it, but we can't get rid of it. Don't give God instructions every report to do this. He's telling us, you 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 trying to tell me what to do. Then it said the flesh hate to be on authority. The same flesh. But Paul telling you something, he said, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnal minded is death. The ways of sin is death. And we don't understand that regardless of what we do and whether we hear the message or not, God still keep them record. When everybody's asleep and you creeping and doing whatever you want to do, and right now he already know, he's speaking to you. And you said, man, I ain't studying that. I came here for what I came here for. Same way the member. I came here just so on about to say I didn't come to church. But at the same time, God going to judge you rightly. He going to judge you rightly. It don't matter. The word was made flesh. And I'm giving you just with the word. I'm giving you the word. The same person you say you love is the same person I'm talking about. It's bad to be a powerless saint. Amen. The Bible said the hottest fire in hell will be the burning knowledge that you do that you do not have to be here. You're going to know one thing. If you go to hell, you're going to know one thing. I didn't even have to be here. I, I'm talking to, to the member because we really need to know that. I didn't have to be there. But many are troubled because the Bible interferes with their life. It's going to interfere with your life. It's not going to let you be comfortable. That's what I'm telling you. I would not try to find a church that let me feel be comfortable when I know that God wants me to change. But I can go here. And, and then you know what? Sin is a dangerous joy. It's, 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 it's a dangerous joy. Even though you be enjoying yourself. Just think, the next time you sin, you die. It's a dangerous joy. You really don't know. Say so you can enjoy your sinful flesh pleasure for a time, but there will be an awesome price to pay for them. We can enjoy whatever we want to. I ain't trying to stop nobody. I know I need to stop. But you just think about this. You live 60 years and die, and you don't enjoy yourself for 60 years, and then you die, and eternity ain't no end. Now, y'all tell me to do the figure. Don't add up, don't add up. I live 60 years and die and go to hell for eternity. 
and there is no end to eternity. Do the figure. I don't enjoy 60 years, but now where I'm going, there's no way to get out. Ain't no exit. Ain't no nothing. I enjoy whatever I did. I enjoy pardon. I enjoy club. I enjoy whatever you want to name, whatever your enjoyment is, you name it. But now you're dead. Yeah. Mm. My God. That's why I ain't trying to go. I ain't trying to go. You can't shack up with the devil and expect for God to pay your rent. You, you can't spend time with the devil all the time and then want God to pay you rent. Because that's what we do sometimes. We live in a kind of way, and then soon as we about to get a, a eviction notice, we start saying, Lord, save our house. And God ain't had no part in the house. You didn't even let him come to the party you were having. But now you want to pay your rent. You want to stay in your house. No, God, get them evicted. Put them out. The sin that you love so dearly only drag you to hell. The sin that you love and this flesh will never be saved. I, I'm really, I'm really impressed with our member because all the knowledge God don't gave y'all, and y'all still make a re reservation for hell. You still ain't trying to escape hell. I don't understand. I don't know what it's going to take. It said our ears grow deaf to the word of God because the presence of sin is in our life. That's something right there. The national anthem of hell is I did it my way. Y'all yeah. going to be putting your hand on my heart in hell telling God my, this is my national anthem. I did it my way. Here you are, if I still burning, but you did it your way. I'm just impressed with y'all. I am. I am. I am. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. And then it said, when you are looking for, uh, for a loophole in the word of God to justify doing what you want to do, the enemy will gladly help you find one. Well, I'm just young and and, 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 and God understand y'all know we can talk we can talk we can talk to him now we got a way of talking to God but no flesh should glory in his presence it, it don't matter what you think I'm really impressed Galatians 5 and 16 said this I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary one to another. Y'all see, it's always a battle. When you say, that flesh still is trying to pull you. When you ain't say, the spirit, every now and then, getting a chance to get in there. You might hear a song or something might happen. Because God is a good manager of your life. He'll let something happen to try to draw you to him. Because he wish that no man perish and, and, and have to God die like that. So... He, he do a thing. But we got so many preachers and, and, and people in church that, that's fooling people. Because I think every man ought to have a Bible, woman ought to have a Bible to study to make sure they understand what God wants. But most of us, we don't have a, a Bible. God is the only one that uh, will fire you and, and still let you work. See, on jobs, you get fired and they give you a piece of you had to get off the property. But that's why some preachers are still in the pulpit. God don't fire them, but he still let them work. And you can say you say, but God might be on fire. Talk in the Bible about how God get people over to a rubber bait of mind. That's why gay people think it's legal what they're doing. They, they do. They think it's legal. They say God made them that way. So you're saying God is making an error. Uh, but when you can go to the uh, Walmark or Lowe and look in the plumbing section, and the plumbing says female and male. Oh, yeah. So the, you mean the plumbing got enough sense to know that they, they don't go together? Oh, yeah. I'm talking about plumbing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
And then man that he created in the image don't realize that a man and a man shouldn't be together. I hope now don't never try to rap to me, because I don't know. I, I, that's a hard pill to swallow right there. You got a uh, mohair on your face than me. And then you trying to holler. And you don't sit your tail down somewhere. But we ain't doing that. Now, if I'm going to sin, I'm going to sin the right way. I ain't going to sin that just the wrong way now. If I'm a sin, I, I ain't that confused. Yeah. But let me just say something to y'all, all y'all in the Y'all might as well be sisters and dice too. Because you still doing what you want to do. It, it, it go together, y'all. It go together. See, see y'all y'all were laughing when I was just talking about that. But what about the sin you doing? What happened? Y'all was excited. <laughs> they don't switch out on me now, man. But that's what I'm saying. God is trying to tell us something. But no man have ever yet hated his own flesh. You can talk about everybody else, what they do, but you can't talk about yourself. It said the spirit and the flesh are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the thing that you would. That's why God is talking to us today. He's talking to us to let us know that you can keep on playing but I do have the answer. How do you know that, Apostle? Galatians 6 and 7. He said, for all y'all, your flesh will never be saved. For all cornerstone members and the guests. One thing you better know, he keep good documents. He could, he could keep good record. How do you know that? He said, be not the sea. God is not mom. Now y'all can fool me. I don't know. Yeah. But I'm going to put this in your mailbox. Yeah. He said, be not to see God is not mom for whatsoever man sow it, that shall he reap. If you sow love, you ought to reap love. But you sow to your flesh, you're going to yeah. reap corruption. It's, it's, just, it's just as simple as that. Be not deceived. He said, you can't deceive God. Now you can deceive me. My members try to deceive me every Sunday. Look how nice they look. Don't they look sad? God gonna burn them. They can't get away. You can't get away. He said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. You might get fooled a lot of things. He said, for whatsoever man saw it, that what he reaped. You can't put corn in the ground and expect to get a watermelon. You can't sow to your flesh and make you think you're going to the kingdom. You can't do it. That's what he's trying to tell you. He's making a comparison now. He said you can't do it. He said, for he that sow to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sow to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, tear, for in due season, huh, we shall reap if we faint not. He's telling us that. Be not to see. God is not marked. Whatsoever man sow it. Now you sow to whichever you want to. I just told you, don't sow to that, 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 that thing. Don't do it. But the flesh will never, never, no matter what you do, be saved. Amen. John 13, as I bring the the flight in a little bit and we might have some turbulence as we come in for all of that fly we understand what turbulence is but it said John 13 he said in the 46th verse he said I come a light unto the world that whosoever believe on me should not abide in darkness he's telling us again anybody that come to him should not abide in darkness. He's trying to tell us something. He said, because light has come into the world. Your flesh will never be saved at no time in the past or the future. On no occasion, not ever. Your flesh won't. He said, if any man hear my words, 
and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejected me and received not my word, I just gave you his word. Now, you, whether you receive it or not, I'm the mailman. I just put it in your box. He said, receive not my word has one that judge him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge you in the last day. The word you don't heard today will judge you. I didn't ask you for no money. I didn't play with you. I didn't joke with you. I told you that this part of you would never be saved. And any time in your mind that you start talking about being right, the flesh always tell you, not yet. You got time. That's why so many people ain't saved. They don't know, you don't know when you're going to die. But they constantly tell you, man, you just, you got time. You ain't number 20. You ain't number 22. You ain't number 23. But time is controlled by God. And don't nobody know when they're going to die. But God. And he could be telling you something today that no one else might not hear in him. But he could be telling you, make preparation. Don't ignore the man because he was just trying to tell you it could be time running out. Somebody could be getting ready to leave him. But you know we think? We think we're going to be on our way. But there's people still are dying. They still are dying like every time you turn around, I'm going to somebody's funeral. And then when I seen them before, they weren't even sick. But I know how it is. Plus, you don't understand. I don't. Because he said, if you ain't born again, you can't see the kingdom of heaven. And now we're just trying to go to church. He wants you to be new. But people don't understand why they don't be new. This flesh, it keeps drawing you away from God. Even though you're hearing the word today. I know somebody here right now think about, it. you know that makes sense. I know that don't nobody else know. I know everybody know Robert don't change. Y'all know what he was before, but look at him now. And you can't, you can't ride on him. You can't, you can't ride on him who he used to be. Give him an opportunity to be something different now. And parents ought to be glad that my young son, 19 year old, has chose to give his life to God. You know, some of us grown in it, and we still doing some stuff we ain't got no business. So don't, don't ride him, but you ought to be saying, you know what? I thank God for that church. Because now he, he, he ain't just changed. He learned how to be a father for real, not just a dad. So I know one thing about the church. It's changing life, transforming life, because the way he came in here, he ain't the same person now. 